comedians of the night. <laughs> this next comedian, oh so funny, let's give a big round of applause for Luca. <laughs> Man, airplane mode sucks. It's still a phone, you know? <laughs> Pretty <laughs> underwhelming. Um, I'm Luca. I was in uh, Shopper's Drug Mart the other day, going in to buy some Drake candles, and, uh, <laughs> and I saw this mug with a familiar logo that just said, like, Friends, the show. Uh, I was in the Friends zone of Shopper's, and um, <laughs> I was like, who is this for, man? Friends? The logo, the show, the mug. Um, it's so strange to me, I'm like, if you showed me a mug that said X-Files, it'd be like, X-Files, the show? Yeah, the show, like, who keeps files from their actual X, you know? It's kind of weird. Um, so I took this mug, and I threw it in my basket with the candles, and I go up to the register, and the guy's just kind of like checking me out. He's like, oh, I didn't know we sold those. I'm like, yeah, actually, this one's called Carby Musk. It was inspired by Drake's natural aroma. He's like, yeah, no, I know that. Um, <laughs> Um, I don't know yet. Um, I gotta go back and get one of those mugs. Uh, do you have like a PC Optima rewards card number? I'm like, slow down, my friend. Okay, it's Friends the show, not Friends the real thing. One step at a time. Um, I was uh, I was on Hinge recently doing my like 10 seconds of scrolling for the week before the edibles kicked in, and uh, I saw a woman's profile that said, I'm looking for a man with ambition. And I'm like, uh, you know you're in Vancouver, right? <laughs> ambition in Vancouver is like trying to not have to move. <laughs> it's like uh, getting a second friend. <laughs> Goals. Um, but like, I get it. I want a man with ambition. I want a man who will open doors. I want a man who can take care of me. Um, have you tried a realtor? <laughs> uh, you don't have to go on Hinge. These people will hound you. I have, I've never been pursued so aggressively uh, as by a realtor I met a few years ago. I thought he wanted to be my friend. Uh, this guy took me out for drinks twice before I was even pre-approved. <laughs> and um, after this, uh, we'll call it a date. Uh, he texts me. I love the way your mind works. I think you make a great team. Um, I blocked him, man. I don't do sex before mortgage. <laughs> Um, but four years later, I'm still renting, so got him. You know? um, <laughs> God, just pause, let that laugh ring out. Okay. Uh, uh, I go to therapy. Right, real Brene Brown moment right there. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, as part of my mental health journey, I've learned that um, a lot of our suffering comes from running from what we're truly meant to do, right? Um, and I've made some peace with that because uh, I've learned that what I'm here to do is to watch advertisements. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I love ads. <clears throat> ads, are, uh, ads are psychological, you know, they deal with our fears, our inner lives. Um, in the 60s, ads were just like mask off about this stuff. They would attack you with things like, you know she needs the cleaning power of Pledge because she knows you are sleeping with your secretary. Okay? And, um... But times change, ads evolve. Uh, I take restaurant ads, some of my faves. In the 70s and 80s, restaurant ads are just like family and safety and value, and it's like a snug little bun on top of a hamburger that costs 65 cents and it feeds your whole family and they all go in the station wagon afterwards. And then we get to the 90s and it's like X Games energy, like shredding guitars. If you want a 90s restaurant ad, man, you can't show me a family sitting down. Like, I've seen that. You can't show me a tomato. Boring. Get that food moving, man. Spin that fucking tomato. Don't just, don't just show me a bunch of shrimp just sitting there like a bunch of dead fish. Like, chuck it out. Toss that shrimp. Get a gimbal under there. Bullet time that shrimp, man. I'm just dodging grill marks. Like, oh. I'm so glad because like I didn't know if Canada had TV in the 90s. <laughs> 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 
So the other <laughs> the other thing that started happening with uh, restaurant ads in the 90s is that food started getting like weirdly hot. Uh, <laughs> there are a lot of these ads where it's like it's dark. Uh, there's no family around. You are in the featureless void of your desire. It is just warm. There are flames licking up against these ribs there, okay? We are pulled in real close. It's just marinade being basted on top of marinade. Like, get me the rib fluffer in here. You know? These, uh, I feel like everyone must have been so charged up that these Applebee's shoots were like this pagan orgy afterwards. <laughs> I, um, I think about the show Mad Men a lot. This Mad Men, the show, just so we're clear. Um, and I think about how Don Draper would have pitched one of these sensual food ads. You'd have some like uh, crusty old client, like, we'll never peddle that kind of food smut under my brand. And Don would do his thing and he'd go, the Bible tells us that God took a rib from Adam to make Eve. <laughs> Everyone knows mankind has longed to fuck a rib. <laughs> but Chili's is the only brand brave enough to say it. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not done. Buckle up. <laughs> we are in the... Um, the advertising endgame now. It's like the uh, the brand cinematic multiverse. Like everything you've ever loved and was dead is coming back. Uh, I I resent my own childhood at this point. It's like remember owning stuff. Well, here's the Green Ranger and the Spice Girls for DoorDash. That's the best we got. Like, uh, sweet. Um, and like everyone is doing sponsored content now. Uh, the beginning of all of my podcasts is like 10 minutes of some host going on about athletic greens. <laughs> it's just like, you know, they give me all this clarity and focus. Actually, my boys love to take the athletic greens and put it into their magic spoon. I'm like, shut the fuck up about your boys. I just don't want to hear about them. Um, give me a tight five, man. Give me Mark Marin just being like, hey, it's me, Mark. Buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. I have three cats. Buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. You know? In and out. Um, I don't know when we all got so comfortable with selling out. Uh, if you grew up when I grew up, you didn't know a lot. But one thing you did know, dude, is you were never fucking selling out, dog. You know, that's a fate worse than death. Uh, fortunately, all my favorite singers have managed to escape this because if you made music in the '90s and then you just stopped for whatever reason, I just assumed you died. Uh, like. I was shook to find that all the spin doctors are still alive. <laughs> but they're doctors, it makes sense. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, all these grunge guys got out with their integrity intact. But what if they hadn't? Um, <laughs> I think about this a lot, <laughs> and uh, I think it's pretty certain that they would be shilling for mid-teal casual dining at this point. And uh, more than that, I've cooked up some examples. You would have, like, Alice in Chains, like, I'm that Jack in the box, eating with my friends. Jack's kicking stackers are back, three hot patties and a box of clown fries made right when you order, you know? That guy? <clears throat> You'd have, like, Soundgarden for Panera Bread, just like, oh! You wired me to bacon, set the broth begin to boil. <laughs> Rip them, tear them, dunk them. Any way you bull is cool. I'm gonna break my crusty cage. <laughs> <Rip them. laughs> uh, encore? Okay, we got one more. <laughs> <laughs> <That's a lot. clears throat> when they say that we need to protect Eddie Vedder. Uh, I think they mean from this. Because <laughs> right now he could just be in some room like, Whoa, cheese and two free toppings on the lodge order today. Oh. Oh, all right. Don't forget the Domino's guarantee at your door in 30 minutes. Domino's! 